Hi folks, back again. Just a wee want to keep us going while the goose quills uh, drying. I'm going to show you uh, just basic preparation again, because that's where it all starts, of this stuff. Good old Norfolk reed. Brilliant material. Very buoyant. When it's prepared properly, quite strong. You could squash it, but it's quite strong. Multitude of uses. I like to use it for wagglers, and you can also use the thicker parts of the stem, which is near the bottom, obviously. You can use this for like a, a body for a waggler or, or something. Now, this has been cut and it's been dried for approximately a year. Unfortunately enough, I've got my workshop here. And there's a pile of it, if you look over my shoulder, up here, there's a pile of it there that's been sitting there for over a year. Now, you'll probably know the reed, if you if you, if you know what it is, you, you know what it is. It grows in kind of wetlands, it can grow 10, 12 feet high, wispy leaves, green during the summer, and grows a beautiful honey colour when it starts to die during the winter. Now, obviously being a reed, it grows in wetlands. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you can find nice bits, like this, you see the, the patination on there. That's what happens when you get a bit of water in the leaf, and it basically starts to rot the, the reed. You also get bits like this, where it's mottled, which again, once it's prepared properly and lacquered, comes up absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to just show you a quick one today, just show you how I go about cutting it and preparing it ready to make various different types of float. I've got a few in mind, but we'll carry on with them as we go. That's the tool to cut it. I find the best way. The way I use it, I'm a joint at the trade, so I know my way around about a saw, sometimes. Hacksaw, if you know anything about them, the blade the teeth on the blade normally face forward, so you're cutting on the forward cut. What I do is turn the blade backwards, so that you're actually cutting on the back cut, but there is still cutting action on the front. It's a wee bit more delicate, and it's a wee bit less harsh on the reed, because although it's hard, it, it would still it's very brittle. Uh, there is various different ways of curing the reed. You can just let it dry, but there's a few other ways of curing the reed and making it ready for float making. I'll let you work that out yourself. I told you at the very beginning of my series, I'm not going to give away every secret there is in the float making because part of it is actually doing it yourself and finding out yourself. Uh, a lot of which I have done over the, the past few years. So, I've prepared this secret. I'm not telling you how you do it, but work it out. It's not that hard. Uh, reed ready for cutting and making into a float. I use a hacksaw, holding the reed in my hand, basically just very gentle cuts forward, not really cutting on the back cut, forward, nice and square, or as square as you can get it, comes with practice. You are not want to go all the way through the wall of the reed, and just work your way around the full diameter, just gently turning it in your hand, and hopefully, with a bit of practice, you can come round to meet the start of your cut. Again, not all the way through, and what you want to do at the end of it should, if you cut through far enough, will just gently break off. You've cut through the main membrane on the outside, so it shouldn't splinter. So, the left, relatively square cut. Quite pleased that one worked. I think I'm full of myself. But, I'm going to square it off. File. Nice and square. Very gentle. nice square cut. The other side, 
is alright. Oh, it's actually a wee split, so I'll cut it further back. Just work again, work your way around. I'm just doing this to show you the preparation. Oh, that's the crack. So nice and gentle around that. There it goes. Gentle twist. And off it comes. Well, like that. that squares it off. Now, with that, you could make a very small waggler. I use a lot of these. 4mm lollipop sticks. Wooden, hardwood lollipop sticks. You could also use some of these, fellas. Bamboo, barbecue skewer. Show you what for. The reed obviously is hollow, as you can see. These can be inserted in to the bottom of the reed, like this. Glued in place. Cut, or cut before you put them in, I find it's easier. Glued in place, and that could be your stem for your eye. You can also use the bamboo. If you want to make a small insert waggler, you can go on the top, and be glued in, and then cut off your length. I'll go through this. I'll maybe make, not right now, but I'll make a wee insert waggler and show you how I go about it. The only th other thing that I do, I find it get a better finish. You see it's square. Now, when you whip up to that, it's not the best finish. What I do is using the file, again, roughly a 45 degree angle to the quill, eh, to the quill, I'm obsessed with quills, to the reed. Just nice and gentle. Work your way around. And basically just file a chamfer round about the top of the reef. I'll do this and then I'll tell you why. Now what you want to do is just watch the thickness of the wall. And what you want to do is take that down. Basically to a point right round the full reed where there is no square edge left on the very tip. Now this is a wee tip, don't tell anybody I told you this, but it will pay dividends if you can get it right. There you go. Basically you want that to end up like that. Hope you can see it. Chamfered and then the inside in here coming to a point on the wall. Now what can happen there, or what you can do there, if I can pick another bit of reed for the back here, is I'm going to cheat here, I'm just going to cut a bit of the pliers just to show. Insert. You get another piece of reed. This is the beauty of it, because it's hollow. You can get another bit. I'm only doing this to show you how to do it. Obviously you would take a lot more care. Get another bit of reed and insert it in. If it will go. Pick the wrong size. Get the right size, it takes a wee bit of matching up, will fit inside that one, and that gives you a nice step in your float in your reed. Now, that there is easier whipped if you're whipping with thread, fine silk or the sulky thread that I use, you'll be able to start your whip here and come down. And then the transition here, going from that piece to this piece, will just gently slide up. Where, if you had that, in that end, you have a step, which you'll never hide. So, that there, basic 
preparation, basic cutting. Now, the only other thing I would mention is the reed has a waxy membrane on it and it won't take too kind like a bit of lacquer. It'll, it'll peel off very easily. 120 grit, what is sandpaper. Very gentle, just to form a key on the reed. What you don't want it goes too deep, too hard, and it takes off all that beautiful patination. All the way. Get the dust off. And that wee bit of reed is ready. I'll fire the bottom. And then I'll show you how we can make a wee insert reed waggler. Lovely for fishing in the margins. Nice and delicate, depending on the size of tip you put on it. You can step that as many times as you want. And then put a wee bamboo tip in it. Put an eye in the bottom or leave it as a peg if you use a silicon float adapter. I'll show you the next time how I would go about putting the rest of it together. Thanks folks.